A couple of armed guards entered a high security complex. They brought in two people and were going to be interrogated. One of the officers Salon was in a room with a mirrored window. He held his plastic cup of coffee and looked in at what was an interview room. Made of stainless steel and anything inside was soundproof. Salon was listening in at the new arrivals and how they ended up at the Astana confinement. The first person in the interview room was the doctor. A renegade time lord from the planet Gallifrey who'd stolen a Type 40 TARDIS. He'd been on trial twice by his own race and came out clean with a regeneration to boot. He didn't say much during questioning. He had a lean straight face type of look on him like he was keeping a thousand secrets unknown to everyone and when it was finished they taken the doctor to level 4 BZ slash 8. The second person in the interview room was Louisa Shepard, a native from the planet Earth. Sweet and innocent on the outside, but dirty on the inside. Having portrayed a character in a pornographic movie which by law is considered illegal and therefore any beings involved even if it just a passing extra would be count as a criminal. She felt insecure when being questioned. Thinking all these laws are bullshit and didn't take it quietly when she was taken to level 4 CA slash 2. Salon pondered of these two individuals. His thoughts were cut short when his superior Maslow entered in and instructed him to meet with the head of the facility. Kochba. Salon headed to the top level of the facility where Kochba was in his highly technological office and said he wanted to see him. Kochba was plugged in with tubes to his chest and swiveled his large black chair to face him. Kochba said to Salon that this doctor person is dangerous. Committing genocide to a newly generated plant race and destroying a planet with a piece of technology that originates from his home planet. He's definitely mean business and is glad that they've captured him. The doctor sat in his cell on a small plastic chair. He just stared at the metal walls until he was distracted by his cellmate Chipner and his attention diverted to him. Chipner was a young offender from the planet Gale. He was a petty thief who was caught in the wrong crowd and got imprisoned while the other ones are roaming free. The others gave a false alibi as leaving Chipner in a deep hole and got the rap even if he was an accomplice in a failed robbery involving a currency called Zalion. The doctor did sympathize with him about his predicament. Chipner did mention about the doctor's destruction of the planet Skero and the doctor quickly leaned forward to shut Chipner's mouth. The single thought of the Daleks made him tense and his hand was starting to shake. A little later one of the wardens came to the cell door and ordered the doctor and Chipner to head to the mess hall. The two headed to it and were confronted with all space thuggery. The food that was being served looked artificial. A jet black sausage with a small blob of lumpy base blah. The doctor asked one of the caterers about this and all the caterer muttered out was the word protein. The doctor sat down one of the benches. However Chipner became erratic and told the doctor he was sat on Bossa's bench. The doctor asked who Bossa was until a large hand pounced on his shoulder. He looked behind and standing above him was a large built man with multiple face tattoos grunting at him. The doctor tried some exchange polite small talk but it didn't work and Bossa picked him up his throat. The doctor's face turned a shade of red and his vision started to become blurry. Chipner was frightened to intervene as he knew what Bossa is capable of and then some of the guards brought taser sticks to handle the situation. Bossa backed down and let it go of the doctor who fell hard onto the ground. As the guards moved Bossa away Chipner came over and said to the doctor that Bossa is a brutal criminal. He used to be a professional wrestler until like most of these inmates turned to a life of crime and brutally murdered a family of 38 due to bad blood with an old manager. The doctor crawled up and decided it was time to see what these inmates how they pass the time in here. Louisa meanwhile was facing a more miserable experience behind bars. The level she was on is housed to female inmates that like the males done crimes either petty or monstrous beyond belief. Her cellmate was Uni, a tattoo artist turned prostitute who became a gang leader in her own right on the planet Phonex and some of her pastimes include a sadomasochist flavor. Uni would smuggle certain items up Louisa's anus and use her as a mule so that she can please the clients who she became involved with. Uni would also perform yoga routines and used Louisa as a fitness mat. This made her uncomfortable but she had to hold on to her courage and not become wimpish in Uni's presence. While in his office searching through the surveillance cameras Kochba's attention turned to Louisa and requested the wardens to bring her up to his office. A couple of wardens escort Louisa out of the mess hall and took her up in the large metal lift. When she arrived to the top of facility and was welcomed by Kochba, Louisa looked at his appearance. A man with tubes connected to him and then slickly asked her about a promotion. Louisa wasn't sure what he meant about this promotion. Kochba leaned over and said that she'll be alright. 
A click from his finger and two guards came up behind her. One them retrained her and other inserted a needle into the back of her neck. She started to feel woozy and then pass out onto the floor. Kochba gave a little cackle at what he was planning to do with her. The doctor and Chipna were back in their cell. Chipna was making noises with his mouth while sitting on the top of bunk bed and the doctor was doing something in the small sink. Chipna asked him what he was doing. The doctor didn't say anything just a few grunts and then brought out a small electronic piece with two wires sticking out. Chipna asked what it was for. The doctor again didn't answer his question and mumbled to himself about looking an air vent. He did found it and started attaching it to the rivets. He did say to Chipna to distract the camera in the corner of the room. Do a little dance or go round in a circle. Anything while the doctor planning something and Chipna demanded what the doctor was doing. He replied saying they are escaping and to reach the top of the facility. The doctor and Chipna eventually got into the vents and crawled onwards to reach the top of the facility which doesn't seem. Chipna complained that the vents were getting tighter as they progressed but the doctor told him to be quiet as they crawled. Suddenly a beeping sound was heard in front of them and then the sound of fans echoed through the vents. Chipna realized what was happening. The vents were producing heat and knew that they had to move quickly. Chipna was starting to losing his grip on the metal walls. The fans were producing more heat and he was starting to slip away backwards. The doctor told him to hold on to his ankle. Chipna did but started to lose the grip again and sadly let go of the doctor's ankle. Chipna fell down the vents. He then sucked violently right and got mangled into the large fan. The doctor closed his eyes and took a massive breather. His little comrade that helped him to this point is dead and it's only him left standing. But he had to process it into getting to the main hub of the confinement facility. The doctor managed to get out of the vents and ended up in Kochba's office. He laid on his back to catch his breath after being nearly baked and mulched in the vents. He got up and carefully sneaked over to where Kochba's large computer was. Before he could even get to the office table Kochba emerged out of a corner still planted with tubes inside him and started to become more stiff with jerky reflexes. The doctor's eyes were drawn to learn the fact that Kochba was an android of a synthetic design and that the tubes was part of a life support. Kochba then gave a twitch click with his mouth and Louisa came out. The doctor was pleased to see her but he noticed that she was in an unresponsive type trance. He shouted at Kochba at what he's done to her and Kochba said that he needed a new servant for his pleasures. The doctor began to frantically circle Kochba and smash the control panel to the metal lift preventing any guards to enter. Kochba gave a stare that the doctor was going to be a handful. In a cowardly retaliation Kochba presented surveillance footage from places that the doctor and Louisa visited mainly Rimora and the Ostentero. The doctor looked at the multiple screens and asked how does the footage tie up with anything and Kochba states that the Astana confinement is part of the Oztach company along with the now dilapidated botany complex and the mining ship Ostentero. The doctor's meddling on those visits were called into question about the multiple deaths and that's one of the factors why he was captured. The doctor asked about the surviving wood from the Austin Terror and Kochba said that the company executed it due to presumed but false accusations that it killed the crew on mining ship. The doctor closed his eyes and held his anger. He then retorted to Kochba that the Ostach company will disintegrate in a few years to come and probably be bought out by Walmart or something. Kochba just gave out a gasped laugh like he obtained a victory. The doctor then looked at the black chair and quickly reached for it. He picked it up and thrown it at the large screen. Kochba shouted no and the office was lit up with massive sparks. The doctor looked on at the light show and then turned around. Louisa fell to the floor and seemed to be out of the trance. He looked at Kochba. His life support was destroyed and ended up becoming a flailing wreck. Spurting out a whitish liquid and some of his wires were emerging out of the body. The doctor picked Louisa up in his arms and looked back at Kochba. Androids nothing but a puppet for business. The doctor walked off carrying Louisa and wondered where in the facility did they store the TARDIS. In the following years the Oztach company suffered heavily financially and permanently shut down all its parts. Power stations, mining bases and others that they had their pockets in. All that remains of the company was their logo and it'll forever be ingrained on various junk planets to gather rust.